Hello everybody and welcome back for another episode of Indie Impressions. My name is Nick and today we're going to be checking out another game from the 7 Day FPS Game Jam. This one is called Cricket by developer Oran Conning. Uh, this is a game that's self-described as a first-person horror game. It is a Unity game, and I am playing it in the Unity web player right now. And the only description that I'm given is that it's a game about a dark forest, and that we can use WASD to move and left mouse button to interact. Aside from that, though, we're going to be completely on our own. I should let you know I have played about five minutes of this. I'm not sure there's necessarily going to be much in the way of jump scares, so this might be a little bit more on the benign side of the horror spectrum. Uh, but there's still some things that it does right that I wanted to point out. Uh, one thing that it doesn't do right, though, that I want to point out is there's absolutely no sound, as far as I can tell. So that definitely takes a little bit out of the ambience, out of the vibe. Uh, but thankfully, the visuals do seem to make up for it in a pretty big way. It's got a little bit of that, like, I'm scared, pixelated nightmare, lo-fi, low-res kind of vibe to it. And I feel like, for the most part, that generally works for horror games. Uh, there's some exceptions, for sure, but I think this case... Uh, it's got a nice glowy thing going on, which definitely makes me intrigued. So we find ourselves on this path in the middle of this dark forest that we've been told we're going to be exploring. There's a gate here preventing me from going backward, of course. And going forward, we seem to find this sign that's got some sort of a sigil on here. It looks sort of like one of those little crosses that you might wear uh, to bring awareness to some kind of a cause, although I'm not sure if that's necessarily what we're seeing here. It might also be a skull and crossbones in extremely low fi. I'm not sure, but let's wander around and see what we can figure out here. Uh, one of the things that I really do like about this game is, well, one of them is that you can see your footsteps as you walk. Uh, definitely a beneficial thing in this case, especially since the uh, ground and horizon and trees all sort of blend together a little bit to give you uh, what seems to be a vibe of uncertainty and definitely uh, not any kind of a way of mapping where you're going aside from this one little path. Now, the general sentiment when it comes to these kind of games is most people usually just follow the path that they're given, and generally that puts you right in the way of harm or whatever the uh, you know negative repercussions that the game wants to reinforce to you by putting you down a linear sequence of events. That's, that's kind of the way they force you down most of the time. In this case, though, we can actually go however we want. Uh, if we want to go off-road here and look around the trees, we're more than welcome to. There's just no lot, not a lot necessarily out there to find uh, just yet, but maybe that'll change in a little bit. So we find a very mysterious ramshackle kind of house here out in the middle of the woods, and everything's starting to glow a little bit green, if I'm not mistaken, as I get nearer and nearer uh, this area. Oh, has it just changed? It went from very bright green to now all of a sudden back to normal. Uh, so I'm going to try and knock on the door here. I don't believe anything happens, though, so we're actually going to continue our walk around. Now, when I first came upon this house, I actually completely ignored the house and went straight for this pyramid, because for some reason, pyramids just do that with me. I'm looking at it, though, and see, I thought at first it might have been a bush, and then I realized there's like a little bit of a weird eye on it. It reminds me a little bit of a Metroid as well, so we're going to press on that. It does a little bit of a flippy, spinny thing, and then everything glows in neon colors for a second, and then the... Uh, pyramid seems to vanish to be the exact same color as the ground, thereby, you know, becoming invisible to our naked eye. Uh, so that is my trigger to then continue looking on for other things of equal importance or, you know, whatever that happened to have been. And I like the mysterious enigmatic quality of the fact that I have no idea what I just did there. Uh, also, the visual reinforcement saying, hey, look, everything's glowing for some reason. That also kind of intrigues me as well. So I come upon this brightly colored, I don't know if this is a large fungus or a table or what, but I'm going to click on this as well, and it's going to do a little spinny move as well, and things will start glowing pink. So maybe we've brought a little bit of pyramid power and a little bit of fungus power now to the world around us. Uh, you'll notice now the trees seem to be a lot more bright, and there's maybe a little bit more uh, differentiation in the world, because the first thing we clicked on seemed to make the grass glow, now this makes the trees glow. What's left? Well, what's this also? Is this... Oh, that's actually an artifact as well. I didn't even realize that. And, oh, do we now have color in the ground? I think we do. Now that leaves us with one more important thing to find. Now, I didn't actually see that last time, and I was kind of wondering if maybe I had passed something important. Uh, it turns out I had, and I think that could be a little bit difficult when you're walking through a dark area like this if everything looks the same sort of shade of green and then all of a sudden there's one thing that's slightly off. Uh, that could definitely make it a little hard to find. And then we find this little monolith, which I mistook at first to be a ghost. Uh, very spooky indeed. Let's press on it and see if we can also get a little neon spinning going on here. Everything is lighting up, and we've got... Ooh, magical glowing powers. Oh, is the moon going down? 
it looks like the sky is actually lit up somewhat and oh the moon might be landing the moon is actually landing on the ground over here that's kind of a fantastic thing to find and it seems to be bouncing in place uh, this is all new to me i didn't see this the first time when i tried to do a little bit of a check through this very interested to see if there's more to it i certainly hope there is because i'm definitely enjoying the vibe here i did find those kind of quickly honestly so i kind of don't want this to end just yet click on the moon oh oh there's a new game plus mode all right press u when playing to enter new game plus mode i will certainly give that a try uh let's see what happens press u uh, left click to select color picker, change color, U to get out of edit mode, press F1 to hide stars, press F2 to enable fog edit. Well, that's strange. What are we going to use the color picker for? Did I just select, like, the color of the grass or something? What's, what's going on here? Oh, we can change the colors of all these things individually. Well, that makes a lot of sense. How did I select, though? Right click, oh, left click to select, right click to unselect. Got it. It's actually pretty transparent about that. Oh, we can make the ground like blue. Can change. Oh, I was hoping I could grab the plant there. It doesn't seem to be the case. Oh, we can make a quite a magical little forest here. Can I change the color of this fence too? I don't know if this selects or not. Oh, it does. What a simple and strange thing this is. Like there's there's so little going on, yet at the same time, I find it somewhat entrancing. There's just these mysterious artifacts out there. There's a forest that I don't quite understand. Let's uh, hide the stars with F1. I don't really think that really helps. I kind of prefer the stars stayed on. Uh, can I change the grass, though? That's the thing I really want to know. Not sure if I can directly select this very easily. Yeah, it doesn't seem to be the case. Uh, right click. There's something surprisingly compelling about the idea of transforming the world, too. Uh, I wish there was maybe a little bit more to see, though. If this was, like, a longer-scale prospect, maybe we wander around through this thing, find, like, 25 artifacts little by little in a big old world. I think that could actually be very, very cool. Um, let's press U, actually, to put this away and see what happens now if we click on this. I like the way it makes everything glow, but I like that before. All right, well, now we can at least see when these energies have been used up. I was imagining, too, like, what if we get to go inside of the moon? Maybe there's some kind of alternate universe in there. Maybe we get to find a key that lets us inside that mysterious house. Maybe there could be a tome inside that's what's, you know, giving us the ability to change the colors of the world around us. Uh, maybe this world is much bigger and much more interesting than at first it lets on, because right now it's basically just a big old forest, and there's nothing wrong with that, but I'd like to see more because this is actually very cool. Did I just wander around completely in a circle? I did. There's the sign at the beginning. So it's the easiest way to tell, I suppose. Uh, the footsteps, too, I've noticed they tend to stick around indefinitely, which is really useful. I know this is now uh, kind of ground that I've already tread, uh, but, like, you could really make greater use of that effect, right? Like, imagine the footsteps, uh, after you find enough artifacts, they light up around you in proximity, so you can very easily see the area that you came from, the area that you're going, and then maybe you get a map at some point, and then you have to traverse a big old landscape to find more of these artifacts. It's just something something there that I think is very cool. Uh, maybe add in a little bit of story exposition, some occasional, I hesitate to say it, but honestly, audio logs would probably be fairly appropriate here, as long as they're kept fairly short and to the point. And uh, just some a little, a little bit more discovery would have definitely gone a long way to make this uh, game a lot, lot more cool. But it's actually quite cool as it is. Uh, again, the sound effects, too, would go really far, too. And it doesn't take much for uh, this kind of an ambience, either. Uh, just a little bit of ambient nighttime sounds, some uh, occasional proximity-wise sound effects that get triggered. How do I keep wandering around in a circle here? I keep going in one direction, coming out and back in the other one. I was walking straight. I guess I must have turned around at some point. Uh, but anyway, I guess that'll do it for crickets, guys. If you want to let me know about this one, feel free. I'd love to hear your opinions. Uh, what do you think about this very simple adventure that we've just gone on here? Did you find it uh, distasteful? Did you find it interesting? Did you find it mysterious? I think there's something about this glowing neon effect that just makes this whole forest seem so magical. And I feel like that effect by itself is actually something worth capitalizing on. Maybe there's actually some angles you could take that just, you know, play to that strength even more. Uh, but let me know what you think in the comments. Make sure you leave a like if you enjoyed this video. And of course, be sure to come back again tomorrow because new episodes of Indie Impressions go up every single day. So look forward to bringing you a whole bunch more. Hope you enjoyed it and hope to see you all tomorrow. Have a great night, everybody.